Hi, I'm Victoria Sprigg and I'd like to introduce you to a complementary therapy called Swiss Reflex. As a holistic therapist, I use many different natural treatments, including aromatherapy and massage, which are perhaps more widely known. But in many circumstances, Swiss Reflex can offer the most effective techniques for stimulating the immune system in order to restore the body's healthy balance. Reflexology is fast becoming a very popular complementary therapy, focusing on the feet to access every part of the body. Swiss Reflex is similar insofar as it also applies treatment to the feet in order to care for the whole body, but it differs in a variety of ways. I trained in Swiss Reflex at the Shirley Price College in Hinckley in Leicestershire, the treatment having been developed by Shirley Price, who has been responsible for the advancement of this treatment throughout Great Britain and overseas. As you can see from these charts, each part of the foot corresponds to a specific part of the body and naturally it's far easier, for example, to access the centre of the foot, the corresponding point for the liver, than it is actually physically to get to the liver. Also, there are not only the physiological aspects to consider, so it's necessary to think of the health problems in a broader sense. Just as with acupuncture and reflexology, the theory behind the treatment is based upon the meridians of energy passing through the body. If one of these energy channels is for some reason blocked or temporarily obstructed, then health problems tend to occur. With acupuncture, needles are used all over the body to restore the full flow of chi. With Swiss reflex, we use pressure from the thumbs just on the feet and the results can be equally as beneficial. The major difference between reflexology and Swiss reflex can be seen at the outset. The first part of the Swiss reflex consultation will be geared towards diagnosing what is responsible for causing any problems and a relaxing corrective treatment follows. Essential oils are also used in each treatment a different mix for each client. The best way to see how it works is in a practical situation and I'm pleased to say that five of my regular clients have agreed to let us sit in on a consultation. Although you'll see plenty of ideas for the type of foot massage you can try at home, I would always advocate seeking professional advice and at the end of this programme there will be a selection of further information and telephone numbers to help you find a suitably qualified practitioner within your area. Throughout each session I will always give advice on how to continue treatment at home between appointments as well as offering a selection of essential oils that may also be of help. Wendy, you've come in today for a Swiss Reflex consultation and what I'm going to do is check both sides of the feet, now mainly the skeletal system. How Swiss Reflex works is that there are meridians of energy working through inside the body and ending up at all the extremities, so at the palms as well as the feet, the face and the scalp. And those energy lines called meridians will go through the body and where the extremities are at particular points there will be reflex points and if any of those points are painful in any way whether they have a bruised feeling they may feel gritty under the skin or they may feel like a, a needle or a nail is going in, might be quite acute pain, then that can show that there's congestion in that energy line. Now the energy line, as I say, goes through inside the body and it will work through the organs, through the muscles, the limbs, the bones, the, the whole body. So in that way I can check the whole of the body just by looking at the feet, for instance. I'm checking the feet today because they're the easiest part of the body of all the reflexes to work on and obviously it's easier for me to check your liver and your digestive system for instance which are internal organs by checking on the feet rather than checking on the body. Mm. Okay so what I'm going to do now is check your skeletal system. If I can just move your foot up to there, wonderful. 
As I say, if you feel anything as we're going along, a bruised feeling, pain or whatever, let me know as we're going along. Okay. Having done several years of treatments now, I can feel myself just there. Okay. Okay. I can feel, as, as well as you're feeling, I can feel if there's any problems there. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes more than you yourself can feel because mm -hmm. the nerves in my thumbs are more sensitive than the areas of your feet here. So I can okay. feel any grittiness or bubbliness under the, under the feet. So this area here is your spine. This being the centre of your body, working from the head down through the neck, the thoracic, lumbar, and down to the sacral area down here. Now, this area that you just pointed out was, mm -hmm. was uh, a little painful, is the lumbar area. It's just equal to where your kidneys would be, but on, on the spine on your back, mm -hmm. in the centre. Okay, now coming round to your... Yeah. That was painful, yeah? Mm. Okay. Then coming round to your shoulders, that was your shoulder blade, this is your shoulder point, yeah. You could obviously hear that, that was yeah. a click. But also it's quite gritty in there, mm. it, there's a lot of things moving around in there. The sort of pressure I'm applying, it's not too much and yet it's quite firm and obviously I'm not using my nail, I'm just using the pad of my thumb. Mm. So if you do feel anything like a pinpoint pain, it won't be my nail, it will be a feeling from inside. Now checking your joints. Uh, uh. Mm. Right, okay. The areas of pain then on the skeletal system were your lumbar, a little bit on your shoulder blade, little, well, quite gritty actually on your shoulder point. And then coming down on the joints on this side of the foot, we've got the elbow, the hip, and then the knee, just close together here. And it was the first one, the elbow that seemed to be a little bit gritty. Um, it's interesting at this point not to, not to worry too much about anything that does arise because these congested lines may just simply show a problem that may occur in future years but we can do something about it now. Mm. Or it may be that you've, you've banged your elbow recently. It might just be an acute problem and not, not something that's chronic. Right. right. Let's check the other foot. I'm working up the shoulder blade here. That's um, a little bit painful. Yeah, a little bit gritty in there, I can feel that. A lot of people have grit in their shoulder blades. In their feet, that is. It shows me there's congestion in there and again there. Quite a lot in there. Coming down from the shoulder point down to three joints down here. The first one is the elbow on the yeah. bone. Yeah. yeah, second one the hip, third one the knee, down here. I could feel the hip as well. Let's lower this knee. And check this side of the spine. Working down the left side of the spine, all the way down from the neck. Painful there. Mm. That's interesting, it's slightly higher up than it was painful on the right side of the spine, so far. Yeah, and I felt a little click there. Yeah, Did you feel that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the whole of the inside and left side of the spine. And this is the sacral area going round at the very bottom here to the mm. coccyx. So this is right at the base of the spine, almost at the top of the buttocks. Now, if we were to work round the buttocks, this would be this area. And also, once I've just checked the shoulder blade, I'll show you on the other side. Very, yeah. more so than the right side, mm. yeah. Okay, and coming round, I'm now going to check the sciatic nerve, which because there was some pain on the lower back and the buttock, I'm just checking to see if it affects the sciatic nerve at all. Yeah, just where you press last. The very last there, one, yeah. that's interesting. This is obviously on the left side and it's the sciatic nerve that runs from uh, the centre of the buttocks here, this sciatic 
point in the spine and then down both legs so obviously this is going down the left leg and mm. that's quite a long way down the left leg that I get a lot of um, a discomfort down my leg right from my back so that's probably why it shows there yeah well that would tally because that's that's where it's painful so in a treatment that's when I would treat that part of the foot to try and help the pain and prevent eventually that, that uh, sciatic nerve from being squeezed, mm. which is causing the pain. So, coming round, checking the shoulder point, again very crunchy there. Mm. Down the three joints, that was your elbow again, oh. hip and knee. Elbow's the worst, but the other areas are fairly crunchy. You could do with a really good massage on the feet using the Swiss reflex points, particularly on the skeletal system, mm. by the look of it. So what I'd like to do is treat your spine, your shoulder blades, and your sciatic nerve. Right. Now, the best way for me to treat you is using essential oils in a cream which is oil-based, so it, it's a, a wonderful lubricant for the feet as well and I use essential oils specifically for the skeletal system. Now that will include rosemary, black pepper and lavender. Similar oils which I would use in aromatherapy in a massage. I'm mixing some reflex cream. With a drop of rosemary. Or two drops and some lovely black pepper, both very stimulating. That's what we need, we need the circulation to be boosted in that part of the body. And some lavender, beautiful. And mix them together. The beauty of essential oils in a cream like this is that they will mix straight into the cream and not separate. So once they're mixed in, that's it. Wonderful. Mm, it smells really strong, doesn't it? It is very strong. Yeah, Let's nice. just try a little bit of it, if you don't mind, under your nose. Is that all right mm. if I put a little bit there? There we are. Mm, lovely. And then you can smell it during Clean the treatment. Surfaces. Yeah. Mm. Quite often people have oils treated on the feet and during the treatment even though they haven't had any put on under their nose they can smell it yes because it's coming through the air but also it works through the circulation as well right. amazing mm. just put that on there for a second and apply this cream all over the foot in between the toes and a little to the other side. Feels nice, doesn't mm, it? It's lovely. Yeah. It's really nice. Lovely. So working on your right foot. A little bit of a massage to warm the foot up introduce my hands to the feet. In fact, this is very important for those who feel a little bit sensitive about their feet and showing their feet to a therapist. I know it can be quite a hurdle and also for the ticklish side of it. So what I do is I treat the feet very firmly. I don't tickle them or, or I'm not a delicate touch at all, quite firm. And with the diagnosis as well with the massage, I'm, I'm quite firm and that tends to help. Okay, what I'm doing now is working down the spine exactly the same areas that I was working in the diagnosis. And the slower I go, the more I feel, the, probably the more you feel, and the more I do this, you'll probably notice more feelings will come out in the feet. They may go grittier, and that's what exactly what we need, because we need the grit to come out, any of that. Did it feel gritty to you or was it a bruised feeling or how exactly did it feel? In places it was gritty and in other places there was actual bruise and feeling. Yeah. 
but it is a wonderful feeling to have your feet massaged. It, having said all that, it's just lovely to have very all relaxing. of that. Yeah. It's, it's very relaxing. Of course, you've got the aroma at the same time. Mm. But also, it's nice to get rid of any pain, you know, whether it's in your back or whether the actual pain is in your foot or, or anywhere. Mm. And you know that when you're having this done, it just feels like it's all going, mm. all that pain is going. And when you walk away today, your back should feel 100% better. I hope so. Your life. Yeah. I, I recommend that you use these oils between treatments. Just it coming onto your shoulder blade here. Between treatments, I'll give you a little pot of oil to use. And then come back as regularly as you can, say fortnightly at first, going to monthly. And I can massage these areas and that will help your back, uh, sciatic nerves, shoulder blades, etc. a great deal. Yeah. Amazing. Lovely. Feel all that grit yeah, coming out in there. Much. Yeah. Using my thumb quite strongly in here. The feet can actually take quite a lot of strength. Mm. Lovely. And then coming round to the sciatic nerve. And up the length of the nerve down the leg. use my finger for that part. Oh, that is really painful. Tender, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I'll be sensitive to that then. I'll just sweep it several times to get the pain out. Now, all this time, the oils are working through the skin into the mm. circulation, the essential oils, the black pepper, rosemary and lavender. So, it's not just the massage that's helping you now. Mm. And the beauty is, it will go on helping you when you leave. It's not just this uh, an hour and a half now, it, it's actually once you've left and over the next couple of days those oils will help. It's lovely. Good. I'm quite sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. A little bit more oil coming round to the other foot and working down the spine. Exactly in the same way as on the mm. other side. Lovely. There's a lovely channel working down the inside of the foot here, which my thumb naturally falls into. And it feels really nice when it's healthy and strong and no grittiness there at all. Just a nice long channel. And working up the inside here. The reason I work I don't work all the way down in one continuous flow, I work downwards to this point and then upwards to this point is because your bladder is actually on this point here and I wouldn't want to put any pressure on your bladder oh, so I just miss mm. out that little hump in the, in yeah. the centre there. If I was checking your excretory system I would check your yeah. bladder but I wouldn't uh, during the skeletal system. Lovely, that feels better already mm. there. Nice and smooth. Coming up to the shoulder blade and working nice and deeply in the, the shoulder blade called the scapula. Nice massage there. I have to be quite careful with this area because the heart overlaps it just in this area here. So I wouldn't want to press on the heart, obviously. That's one area that we do avoid during treatments. And across to the shoulder point. I'm supporting your foot here because I'm applying quite a lot of pressure. Does that feel okay? Mm. It feels like brown sugar. That's the way I describe grittiness. It feels like thick sugar under the skin all moving around. And they're crystalline deposits. That's what I need to move and get rid of. It's amazing. Like yeah, that. and the, the immune system will eat them up, but they need to be stimulated mm. to move around and then they'll be eaten up. Lovely. And a nice quick massage to finish up. Got nice warm feet now. Mm. There you go. It's lovely. Very relaxing. Mary Ann, now you have a little bit of pain in your neck area, don't you? Just tell me a little bit more about it. 
Well, periodically I have trouble here. It gets my neck gets quite stiff and pain just just below the back of my head. Yeah, so quite high up then. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So does it work down into your spine and into your shoulder blades at all, or is it not, just not usually? It's usually sort of just just the neck. It, it maybe sometimes extends down my neck. Right, and mainly on your right side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what's it caused through? Probably children going yeah. <laughs> around when they're yeah. little. And yeah. what about using the PC, head down, anything like that at all? Also at work, carrying sort of computer bags and, and this sort of thing. Yeah, and so it's always, carrying. And you always carry it in your right hand. Yeah, OK, mm. rightio. Well, there can be a lot of advice about carrying and posture as well, which mm. I'm sure you've heard before, yes. but it, 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 it all mean, makes sense. If you can carry any shoulder bags with long straps across you rather than just on the one shoulder, that helps. Right. Because you're not then raising your one shoulder to carry the whole weight, and that will go straight up into your neck. Quite often, people with neck tension get headaches as well. So, yes. do, do you get headaches? Only very occasionally. Oh, you're lucky. Very yes. good. Excellent. Yeah. But you, that's just something to be careful of, that it doesn't get so bad that it gives you headaches or migraines. Now, looking at the feet, the area where the neck is, um, looking at your right side, which is the, the main side that you do have the neck pain, is looking here, just at the base of the big toe, this would be the spine here, the very top of the spine. Mm -hmm. So it would work from here and round to the side of your neck in between the toes here. Right. And again, the same on the other side, but obviously that's mainly the left side of your neck, round the back and round the side of the left side. Now, before I test and treat the neck area, I just want to ask you a little bit about your feet. Now, it looks like you've got a little bit of a fungal infection there, is that right? Yes, yes. And how long have you had that for? Oh, quite some time, yes. Weeks, months, years? Yes, probably months. Yeah, months, yes, yeah. Yes. Fungal infections are really difficult to get rid of once you've got them. Mm -hmm. It can be a sign of candida, which is very common in ladies and sometimes in gentlemen as well. Uh, candida is a yeast infection in the digestive system and because it's fungal it has spores mm. so it will develop into other areas of the body not just the digestive system right. and eventually lead to other fungal problems for instance fungal infections on the toes very common also thrush cystitis um, thrush in the mouth and it's not necessarily an adult infection children and babies quite frequently get it as well so it's something that can be treated with complementary therapy with essential oils which would include t uh, red thyme but mm -hmm. red thyme you can only get from a therapist um, but it's a very strong oil which helps with fungal infections uh, wonderful oil to use also tea tree which you can get in shops, wonderful yes. oil again, and it, it is antifungal. So again, will help with this type of fungal infection. And all you do is massage it in a cream all round the toe area, and in fact, the whole of the foot. If you were to do that twice a day for say, well, as long as you've got it, but even within the first two weeks, you will see a change. Right. Okay. Yes. So that, that would be good. I'll give you some of that to take away. Now, going back to the neck area, I'm going to do the diagnosis first of all, just using my thumb, so holding the foot back, just relax your foot, wonderful, using my thumb round here and in the inside. It's crunchy just there, can you feel that? Oh, yes, yeah? yes. Okay. That's exactly where you get the pain, if you think about it, that's on your right side, just before it comes around to, to the side, just at the back there, that's exactly where it is crunchy. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's actually tweaking as I go over it there. Yes. Yeah? Now, um, these diagnoses normally do tally with problems in the body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't, and it may mean there's con some congestion that's to, to come out and a treatment will bring the congestion out before any symptoms will show, which is wonderful. Right. So it's nothing to worry about if any other tweaks happen that you don't feel in the body. Okay. So let's bring your foot down and I'll check the other side of the neck. 
just going around with my thumb a couple of times fine no tweaks grittiness in that side how about you did that hurt at all no no, no. okay so I'll, I'll concentrate on this side so I'll just mix up some oil using the red thyme and tea tree and then use the oil around that side of the foot okay thank you got a lovely mixture of tea tree and red thyme here mixed into a reflex cream massaged all over the, both feet I know I'm only treating the neck but it's nice to do the whole foot get the circulation working and make the skin feel good at the same time oh, yes. yeah nice firm movements and now coming round to the neck now People's reaction to a treatment on a sensitive area on the body can be the same on the foot. So this may bring out painful uh, feelings on the foot, right. but it's people describe it to me as a relieving pain. It's yeah. something that they know is helping and it just feels wonderful. I mean, obviously the massage itself feels wonderful anyway and using the oils, but they know that that grittiness or sharp pain or however it feels on the reflex point will be relieved and it comes out and then it just gets better and better. And that's during the treatment, let alone afterwards. Right, yeah. okay. And normally a treatment would last an hour and a half with Swiss Reflex and I'm working just around the foot here I'm not working too firmly at the moment, this is actually quite gently. And I'm working around the whole of the neck, concentrating all around the back of the neck here, coming around to the painful point, just relax your foot, lovely. And on the side of the neck, so I'm decongesting the whole area. One more point to make about relieving fungal infections and whether it does stem from candida or not mm -hmm. is diet and nutrition to avoid as much as possible I know it's very difficult but as much as possible anything which is fungal or yeast so for instance mushrooms oh, right. yes. and yeast obviously is in lots of food risen bread um, alcohol and if you if you did, it would stop feeding the candida and therefore help any uh, infections disappear. Right. Okay. Wonderful. How does that feel? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's great. Right. Nice massage down there and on the other foot, not to leave it out. And I recommend coming in for treatments weekly to get rid of that. Okay, yes. And then go into monthly once it gets better. Thank you very much. Alison, what we're going to do today is give the feet a really good detox. This will stimulate the immune system, i.e. the white blood cells, to rid the body of any toxins, crystalline deposits, any bacteria, etc. that that can uh, collect in the body, around the lymph nodes, all around the body and so what we'll do is stimulate the lymph area here on the top of the foot here and also around this area. This one is the inguinal lymph node which relates to the groin lymph node which takes all the toxins away from the lower half of the body and this lymph node here is the cervical which is up here in the chest and that takes all the toxins away from the upper half of the body. So that way we're working on the whole body and really giving you a good detox. Great, right. thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So we've checked your feet and we've found that you'd have no specific health problems at the moment. Everything, all the system, systems of the body are working well, digestive, skeletal, muscular, etc. Yeah. And so you've just come for a general detox and uh, for good health. Good health, definitely yeah. good okay. health. I'm ready for my holiday. Okay, right. The oils I will mix, which are good for stimulating the immune system, are sweet thyme, lavender, and juniper. Okay. Okay. 
having applied the oil, it smells beautiful, doesn't it? Mm. I'm going to massage the feet, give them a really deep massage and over the top between the metatarsal bones here. Sometimes that can be a little bit painful but you need to clear away any toxins. Then round the ankle, and even give the ankle. Just relax. There is a tendency to do this for me. Yes, I, I do find relaxing difficult. Yeah, it can be at first and then you get into the swing of it. Coming around to the other one, nice. Rotation. And that's a yeah, this is the foot that was broken, wasn't it? Right. And it doesn't tickle, which amazes me. <laughs> yeah, and just relax. Lovely. That's good actually, because a lot of people would think that it would. Mm, it doesn't at all. No, you need a nice firm touch and nice flowing movements and continuous touch as well. That's important. Right, coming round to the lymph node here, I'm holding the toes back and just pushing it upwards. First of all, a few feelings. So how does that feel? Does that feel any grittiness or pain there no, at all? absolutely nothing. It just feels very nice. Good, okay. So no problems there. No. But it's still a good idea to release any toxins in case working on it at the same time as diagnosing, which is unusual. Normally I diagnose first and then treat separately half an hour later, but uh, with this, this time there's no problems there. I'll treat at the same time and coming round to the ankle. There we are. Lovely. How does that one feel? No problem there at all. It's fine. This can be painful around the ankle joint here. We do harbour a lot of fluid around this area, swollen ankles, etc. But in your case, they feel fine. It feels okay to you. No pain at all. Wonderful. And I'm again in an upward movement, massaging fairly firmly, just with my thumb, round the ankle bone and then up slightly on the leg, like so. That feels good. Does that feel nice to you? Wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Good. And then a massage again. And off. Coming to the other foot. Just relax your foot. Sorry. That's all right. That's the relaxing bit. Yeah, it? it is. It can be tricky to get the hang of, actually. Oh, actually, I'm feeling a few. That, <laughs> comparing with the other foot, this one, I can feel you this time, whereas before it was very gentle, and this time I can feel yeah. a few things. So that is my bad foot. So Yes, this is where you broke. You, yes. It was about here, wasn't yes. it? So you broke yes. the bone. But it's actually under here on the pad of the foot that I can feel it's quite gritty in there. Mm. Now this is actually on your respiratory system. This is your left lung. Any coughs, colds, bugs going around at the um, moment? Well, it's Qatar. the usual old sort of sniffles which I'm not quite sure is hay for feverish or what it is, but yeah. it's so cold and horrid that <laughs> yeah. it's a okay. Bit. Well, there's something there that needs to come out, so I'll just spend some time. That's the beauty of using Swiss Reflex, that while you're massaging the whole foot, you might find something in a completely different system of the body, like the respiratory system. So instead of concentrating fully on the immune system, I'm just doing a little bit on this lung. I do find when you're doing that, on this foot particularly, I, I'm tensing a bit more. Yeah. So I, I realise I've yeah. got to sort of... Yeah, you're pulling just, against me. Yes, the so. more you relax, the more you will benefit, mm. because if, as you can imagine, the muscles will tighten and I won't be able to go in as deep. No. That's good. I can feel it's loosening up already. Mm. So coming back to the top lymph area here, giving you a nice detox. Following this, you should drink plenty of water, which is good for detox anyway, but after any therapy session, it's advisable to drink lots of water. We should be drinking about four pints a day. 
Now, on top of any fruit and vegetables and salad, obviously very water attentive, that should come up to about six pints a day. And if you can, filtered water or bottled water as opposed to tap, which is full of horrible things like bacteria and metals. I've and bought one of those wonderful things that you can stick in the fridge and stick tap water in to filter it. So yes, yeah. I'm conscious of it. Still haven't got rid of my one cup of coffee habit yet, but I'm working the on it. The one cup is actually more like a bucket, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> First thing in it's the morning. Going down. Going it's going, going down. Yes, it's, okay. It's, uh, I believe it's you. Cup now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but in general, for detox purposes, the less alcohol and toxins such as tea and coffee that you intake, whether it's food or drink. I mean, food-wise, you're looking at fried foods or refined foods, white sugar and white flour, etc. Never touch them. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about the odd alcohol glass, but very <laughs> Yeah, very difficult to, uh, to clear out everything that's bad from mm. one's diet, but, you know, the, the more that you can, the better, generally. I think it's the coffee that's my biggest problem to give up but I'm working on it. Yeah. You'll you'll see differences if you ever do mm. and if you were on six and now on one you'd see the difference between that. Mm. I, ha I have. I've noticed a big difference actually. Lovely. How does that feel? Absolutely wonderful. Relax your foot. <laughs> That's it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Very easy to do. Mm. Very good. Lovely. And a massage off. Barbara, you suffer a little bit with arthritis, don't you? Just tell me where where it affects you. Yeah, in my knees, in my hips, and the back of my neck. Back of your neck, and down your back at all? Not really. No, no not okay. so much. Okay, no. so mainly the joint areas yes. in your neck. Mm. Right, looking at those areas on the feet, that would be around this area here, which is your neck. That's mm -hmm. the right side of your neck, and here's the left side of your neck. And coming down to your joints, we'd be looking that's actually your elbow, and then underneath there's your hip, mm -hmm. and then there is your knee. Do those areas ache at all when I touch them? You mean my hips or my knees, not my feet? Uh, no, actually <laughs> in, your, in your foot as I'm touching them, does that hurt at all? Whether it's a bruised feeling or spiky, Slightly, gritty? Slightly, but not a, not a lot. Not no, much, not, okay. not at that level anyway. Right, well no. just put your knee up for a second. Lovely. And coming round and testing this side. There's your neck again, on your right side, and coming down, elbow, hip, knee. Mm. They it, feel alright? A little yeah, bit feel, in yeah. the hip and mm. knee, okay. Those are the areas I'll concentrate on today. Now also, a little bit of catarrh or possibly asthma at the moment, yes. haven't mm -hmm. you? Mm. And you do use an inhaler? Occasionally, yeah. Occasionally. I try not to, but I do occasionally have yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, so how does that affect you? Is it just in your throat and your chest? Yes, it's, it starts off like catarrh and then I get a coughing fit. Mm. And if that gets out of hand, then I have to use the inhaler. Right. Um, I might just test the rest of the re respiratory system while I'm looking at that. Right. So just doing a quick diagnosis here. I'm coming up the lungs. That's a little bit gritty. Mm. Mm. Coming up the thyroid here because this of course is the... That I can feel. Yeah. Mm. And at the top is the parathyroid. This is the gland that controls the respiratory. So very important for you. These here are the sinuses. They just feel a little bit crinkly. Mm. And coming down with this foot, let's test the respiratory system here. So that's the lung again on the left side, very crunchy there. And coming across to the sinuses, just tweaking each toe. And up the thyroid. That, that I can one, feel. Mm. yeah. Mm. And parathyroid at the top. The parathyroid controls the thyroid. Um, another area of the respiratory is your eye on your left side and your ear. The same on this side, your eye and your ear. How did they feel? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mix which will help both the respiratory system and the arthritis. I'm going to put together peppermint, mm -hmm. eucalyptus and lavender. Mm -hmm. 
the oil I'm applying here is mixed into a cream so that I can really massage it into each foot, applying a little bit more there. And you'll probably smell it already. Can okay. you? Yeah. Mm, it's lovely. The, the, there's one that's quite lemony, which is the eucalyptus. It's a eucalyptus called Eucalyptus stegariana, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm, it's one of my nice. favourites. Mm. Yeah. And it is a, a lemon variety of eucalyptus. Really beautiful. It's decongesting mm. and good for muscle ache as well, actually. And also in there is peppermint which is wonderful to use on the feet anyway. Lots of foot yes. creams, etc., have peppermint in them, which are nice and cooling, but also very healing. Oh, I can feel a few lumps and bumps when I'm working up there. How does that feel? Yeah. Lovely, just a nice massage, a little rotation. Well, you're nice and relaxed, that's wonderful. Around the ankle. Mm. Smells nice for me here as well. Lovely. I'm working through the arthritis on the neck a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. coming down and working through your joints. So it's not necessarily the elbow, it's just underneath, which is the hip joint here. Mm -hmm. Does that feel all right? Yeah, that one yeah. isn't so bad at the moment. Right, it's mainly the right one. And then underneath is the knee. These joints will vary from foot to foot because the elbow is here and this is on a little bone that's right there. I can feel it and this is quite low in this foot. Whereas underneath you've got the hip and then underneath that just a thin width a thumb width apart is the the knee so it's actually very close to the heel whereas normally you might find them a little bit higher up so it, you always take your point from the elbow which is that bone that you can so feel, you feel that yeah and then underneath is the hip nice massage there and then the knee again a nice massage another thing that's very good for treating arthritis particularly in the knees or any joint is to do a compress now that, this is when you would use the same oils which I've used today maybe if it's particularly for arthritis using more stimulating ones like rosemary clove bud and black pepper mm -hmm and mass massaging them in an oil or a cream around the joint and then covering it with cling film or a hot towel, hot, hot flannel mm. and that will keep the heat in and it's just wonderful. Yes, it, I've tried that. So yeah, so. good. And does it help? Yes, it does. Mm. Yeah, mm. feels nice at the time but afterwards it helps the mobility of the joint mm. and any pain that's there as well. Lovely. And coming across to the other foot just going to raise that knee slightly. I feel comfortable. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And working on the neck. And then round. There's that bone again, the elbow. That is a little bit crinkly there. Mm -hmm. And then underneath for the hip and the knee. Now, just bringing that foot down, I'm going to concentrate on the respiratory system, as I said. There's a little bit on the lung here to help any catarrh and yes. coughing, mm -hmm. wheeziness. This helps with hay fever, asthma, bronchitis, um, coughs and colds, flu. I can feel it crunching. Yes, mm. so can I. And there again, this line here is the thyroid and I'm pushing upwards. My main pressure is going upwards. So from this area here all the way up, nice firm movement to the top. At the top here is the parathyroid and I just give that a nice rotation, just concentrating on that one gland. Then coming up to the sinuses.
massaging them all individually and that helps the sinuses underneath the eyes and across the forehead. Lovely. Might as well do a little bit on the eye and the ear while I'm here. That's the all the respiratory system now. And because they are all connected, one can affect another. Mm. So it is wise to treat a whole system rather than just concentrating on one sole area. Lovely. And a nice massage off and knee up again. Wonderful. And I'll now duplicate, duplicate the area by doing the right lung again, a little bit crunchy. How does it feel to be massaged on that area? That's okay. Yeah, that's right. it's not too painful no, or no, ticklish not, or no, good. It's quite interesting. You might see that Barbara has a little bit of hard skin in this area. That's quite common where there are physical problems in that part of the body where the foot relates to. So for instance, this is exactly on the thyroid here. And because Barbara has mild asthma and a little bit of catarrh, it shows that the thyroid needs decongesting. That's the gland which helps to rid the body of, of toxins. Just getting feel that. Up. Yeah, that's quite painful, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And then again on the parathyroid. The thyroid obviously also controls metabolism and energy levels. By metabolism, I mean how fast you can metabolize food, mm. but also whether you gain weight or not. Lovely. Working quite firmly across the sinuses. Wonderful. Now what you may know, notice after this is that the toxins that are being released through this treatment may stir up more side effect feelings mm. immediately afterwards. So for instance, you may find yourself coughing a little bit more or um, a little bit more guitar or sinus trouble for instance. And that is simply the toxins coming out. It, it, about them. it won't last long, it won't be too painful, and it's a good thing that it happens because it showed the treatment worked. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds a bit backward, but it won't last long, and you'll feel much better than, be than before the treatment mm -hmm. once it's gone. And again, drink, drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm and take it easy after the treatment. You may feel quite tired, which is, is fine. Just give in to it and relax. I will do that. The area I'm concentrating on today is the solar plexus, which is here on the foot and also here on the palm. Now, if you find that you're ever stressed and in a bus queue and can't make it down to massage your foot under here, you might want to just massage with your thumb, a nice circle in an anti-clockwise rhythm round in your palm. It's really relaxing, lovely to massage that area of your palm. And again with the other side, just anti-clockwise. Now, I'm testing the solar plexus here because I know, Alison, you're quite a busy lady, aren't you? And can, can get a bit stressed sometimes. I tend to be, yes. It's a lot of activity with the work that I do. And um, what's the work that you do? Uh, I work uh, project management for exhibition stands, so uh, there's a lot of uh, toing and froing and getting things organised and, and remembering everything. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I see. And lots of standing on your feet, I imagine, mm -hmm. as well. Yes, during the shows there's uh, a lot of pressure on my feet and that's up through the body as well. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Right, so I'm going to test this area. I'm just going to feel with my thumb the solar plexus and down with this foot and test this area as well. Again, the solar plexus on the other side. Now how did that feel to you? Any mm -hmm. pain or grittiness or numbness there? Uh, not too bad. The, the right one was fine, the left one was a bit sharper so there's, there's a bit more pressure in, the, in that one there. Mm -hmm. So I'll concentrate more on that during the treatment. Mm -hmm. Now the other area I want to test during this diagnosis time is the digestive system. The digestive system starts here. I'm now testing the liver 
It's a very large organ of the body and the gallbladder here. Tell me as we go through if you feel any sensitivity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then across to this foot, I'm going to test the stomach. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's quite sharp in there, yes. Okay, that was this area. And just next to it, the pancreas. And again, I can oh, feel a bit of grittiness there. Well. very sharp, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to come down a little bit to the small intestines across the foot. And of course the small intestines are cut half and half through the feet and they continue on this side of the foot. Oh, that's getting sharp. The other foot wasn't too bad, but that one is uh, okay. a bit tender. Now this point here is the iliosacral valve, which is the point between the small intestines and it goes through the iliosacral valve up the colon, the ascending, trascending and descending colon down here. And this, this valve can get blocked, and if it's blocked, it can remain open, so food can go the wrong way through, and people have quite a lot of pain down there. Because it's very close to the appendix, people assume it's appendix pain, but not necessarily. It might simply be that the valve's open, and that can ha happen regularly. It's not necessarily a, a chronic problem. It might just be an acute problem for a day. So it's wonderful to be able to massage that in the, in the correct manner. So I'm going from the small intestines in this way and up. And then I'm just testing round the colon. Mm, that's quite spiky as well. Yeah. Up round through there. And the other half of the colon and down and out to the bowel. Yeah, quite gritty there. At the end there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a few points there. We've got the stomach and pancreas, a little bit on the small intestines, the last part of the colon here coming out to the bowel, and the small intestines on this side. But it's mainly on your left foot, which indicates it's on the left side of your digestive system. Right. What I'm going to do is mix a few oils, for instance, coriander, ginger and peppermint, which help with the digestive system. It helps with the flow and also ease any pain. And also, they're very good for stress. So, for instance, peppermint is very good for any headaches and uh, physical stress in that way. And the ginger is quite stimulating, so if you're stressed and feel low with it, ginger is quite a stimulant to, to spice you out of it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> this is the treatment time where I'm massaging the solar plexus again in an anti-clockwise manner. Just relax your foot as much as possible. Wonderful. I'm going in quite deeply here. And that feels good. Yeah, good. And I normally find the deeper I go and the, the more time I'm massaging that the, the crystalline deposits will come to the surface and that's when it helps to get rid of them and it will improve any pain or tension. This side wasn't the painful side anyway, it was the left side, wasn't no, it? but it's coming through now actually, it? it's arising up, I can feel it, yes. And over onto the other foot. How does that one feel? It's funny enough that that's, that's okay actually. Yeah, it's, well, they've it's swapped. It's not come through yet, yes, it's... Uh, not quite so sharp as the other one there. Okay. And I'm not using my nail at all, it's just the pad of my thumb, so there shouldn't be any sharpness unless it's from inside your foot with any energy pain there. Mm -hmm. That's what I was feeling on the other foot. Yeah. Well, that should help you a great deal, and you can continue with your palm massage if you need to between treatments. Now the digestive system. Uh, the liver was okay when we tested it, wasn't it? Yeah. There wasn't any pain there. So coming across to this foot, working the stomach. Now this was quite sensitive earlier, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be quite sensitive with my massage. I'm not applying too much pressure at the moment. 
and again with the pancreas. One area of course to be careful with the pancreas is anyone who's diabetic because of the insulin release and it's an area that we can help a great deal but you have to be very sensitive with that area and just use oils which will help a diabetic. And then coming down to the small intestines, oh yes, a bit crunchy there. Yeah. More so actually than the stomach and pancreas. Uh -huh. Yes, it's coming through more now. Not quite so spiky, but I can feel the crunchiness. Yeah. And across to the small intestines on this side of the foot where it was a little bit painful earlier. That's quite crunchy as well. Now another part of the if you like digestive system which I haven't tested yet is the excretory system now for any detox or um, d well detox for the whole body not just the digestive system it's very important to test this area here now this is the bladder working up the ureter <laughs> yeah that's quite yeah up to the kidney. Now that, where my thumb is now, is a very sensitive part on most people. Most people have quite a lot of toxins in their kidneys, unless they're drinking gallons of water and not taking in any toxins at all. I have been quite good lately, yeah. actually. Yes. <laughs> good, okay. And then just above the kidney, and again, it's moving around quite a lot here. Mm. This is the adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidneys, you, you have two adrenals, each sat on top of the kidney, located about waist, waist level in the back. And the adrenal gland secretes adrenaline and therefore is related to stress levels. The more we're stressed, the more pressure on the adrenal glands. And so it's, it's wonderful to have that gland massaged and then, as you can see here, I'm flushing out from the kidney, down the ureter, and out of the bladder, any toxins. It's a wonderful way to end a Swiss reflex treatment. You may find that you need the toilet afterwards, which is a good thing, release mm -hmm. toxins. And also, you may find that you'll be fairly thirsty, which is also a good thing, because you need lots of water after a treatment. So, coming round to the left foot, And again, massaging through from the adrenal gland, the kidney, down the ureter and out of the bladder. That can be very sensitive, but again, wonderful, relieving pain. That's great. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you very much. And that's your feet done for a while. <laughs> Thank you. When you first come across Swiss Reflex, it can seem a bit strange to those only familiar with Western medicine that treatment to the feet can have such a dramatic effect on the rest of the body, but it really has proved to be of immense value to many of my clients. As I mentioned at the beginning of this program, I am a holistic therapist, which means that I look at the whole body when someone is presenting a specific health problem, treating the causes of the difficulty rather than just the affected area. Swiss reflex is particularly good for stimulating the immune system, so many people find that as well as experiencing relief for their medical problems, they also discover that their general health improves dramatically allowing improved sleep patterns, increased levels of energy and an overall sense of well-being.